am Dr. Lorenzo Pelli, a local physician in Brownsville, Texas. And we are producing a program for BISD, a wonderful high school program in Brownsville, Texas. I'd like to introduce to you Mrs. Liz Canchola, a nurse practitioner student, and Ezequiel Gonzalez, a PA student. They are both alumni from Porter High School. I'm proud of them. Thank you, Dr. Pelley. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And today's topic is going to be Zika virus and MRSA, methicillin resistant staphylococci. Uh, what should we worry about uh, Zika virus? Um, the most uh, important reason why women should be concerned about the Zika virus is if they are pregnant, because the Zika virus, um, while it only causes uh, maybe some mild or flu-like symptoms, in adults can cause severe damage to a fetus. Such as what? Uh, such as microcephaly or small head, um, as well as Guillain-Barre syndrome. Guillain-Barre. Ezekiel, mm -hmm. Guillain-Barre syndrome, mm -hmm. what, how does that present? Uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome is a neuromuscular uh, disease. It presents by paralysis that occurs from the lower part of your body and it ascends or it goes up to the upper part of your body. And interestingly enough, if not treated, it can leave permanent damage, neurological damage to the patient. And it's very treatable. We give IgG, three days of IgG, and that helps tremendously to prevent the long-standing side effects of that disease. Well, um, the Zika virus is transmitted by only certain types of mosquitoes that are primarily prevalent in tropical regions. So women who live in these regions or who have visited these regions um, that develop flu-like symptoms should really wait to become pregnant for at least 30 days. Now, flu-like syndrome. Well, flu-like syndrome is somebody that develops a fever, a rash, malaise, body aches and sneezing, so it's a flu. So what are the diseases we have to worry, Ezekiel, that can mimic Zika virus flu-like syndrome? Yes, uh, there's two very important diseases that we want to rule out. Uh, the first one is dengue fever, which is also transmitted by a, a mosquito. And the second one is a chikungunya uh, disease. So if we want to rule out, in other words, we want to test for those two diseases and before or including testing for the Zika virus. But interesting enough for our audience, testing is expensive, PCR, and uh, so the reason that we want to exclude chikungunya and dengue is because those diseases, you should not give NSAIDs and aspirin because it can have hemorrhage. So the best thing to do is if you develop a flu-like syndrome, do not take aspirin or NSAIDs. Don't you think so? I think? Yes, I agree. Uh, the CDC recommendation um, is to take something like acetaminophen or also known as Tylenol if the patient has a fever or pain. Instead, like Dr. Pelli said, instead of taking an aspirin or an NSAID such as ibuprofen, Advil, and naproxen. What else should we worry about Zika virus? Um, well, it's also important to know that Zika virus can be transmitted sexually. Very important. So um, if a husband has been to a tropical region and has these symptoms, he too should um, avoid sexual relationships for 30 days. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent point. Um, uh, what else there is to tell about Zika virus, Zika? Yes, the first uh, recommendation, or very common recommendation for pretty much any mosquito is uh, use repellent. You want to go ahead and use long sleeve shirts, uh, long sleeve pants, uh, shoes, and all these are to avoid any mosquito bite. So most mosquito bites do not give you this problem, but just as a general guideline is to 
of all your security bytes by these by these uh, things that I mentioned. Another thing that I forgot is uh, not to leave long uh, water, like such as a bucket with water, for a long period of time, because this serves as an area for mosquitoes to multiply and grow. Let alone tires, old tires in your exactly. uh, garden. That is a a. Uh, mosquitoes thrive in the water that lodges in the tires. Yes, sir. Uh, now let's turn into another topic that is of uh, high importance in the medical field, and that is MRSA. MRSA stands for Methicillin Resistant Staphylococci, and that disease has been around for a while. And we have to differentiate between somebody having acute illness with MRSA and being a carrier of MRSA. And that is a big distinction because many patients are, they have MRSA, but they don't have disease as a result of MRSA. So it's important because we have nursing homes where they have dozens of patients that have MRSA but not MRSA illness. And this is why in some hospitals, everyone that is admitted get tested for MRSA in the nose, and then they apply an ointment to kill the MRSA. Whether that is justifiable or not, it remains to be seen, because you can treat the nose, but what about the rest of the body, Lisa? Mm -hmm. Does that, that makes sense because MRSA is present uh, in the nerves, in the skin, other places as well. What do you think, Ezekiel? No, I, I agree with Liz. Uh, it's present throughout your body. Just like we have a lot of bacteria all over our body, we can carry MRSA all over our body. What do you have? True. Any comments about that? You're a nurse. Yes. You know also you are a nurse practitioner student, mm -hmm. but you work as an intensive care unit nurse. Yes, I do. Tell us your experience about MRSA. Um, we have so many patients. We check every patient that's admitted to the ICU for MRSA. We swab the nares, because um, that's the most common place that it's found. Um, and if a patient is found to have MRSA, they're placed in isolation, which means that um, anyone going into the room should be wearing gloves, gown, etc. For the most part, I do think people try to follow the guidelines, um, but you know, there's always that case where I'm just gonna go grab one thing really fast, and, <laughs> and you're in and out, and before you know it, if you haven't followed strict hand hygiene, washed appropriately, then um, the virus is gonna get, or the bacteria is gonna spread. And uh, because people have abused antibiotics so much, I mean, every time you go to the doctor, you want an antibiotic, whether you need it or not. Um, the organisms are just resistant now. In fact, if you go to, if you have a child mm -hmm. and you go to a doctor and the doctor doesn't give you antibiotics, you're a bad doctor and then tra they go to another doctor mm -hmm. until they get the antibiotic. Does that happen? Oh, it happens all the time. All the time. Uh, it's, I mean, it's our duty to inform the public and our patients that not every disease requires antibiotic treatment. And like Liz was saying, well, we're doing a harm to the community by creating these superbugs such as MRSA. So it's very important uh, to, to listen to your doctor. He says no antibiotic is required. Uh, maybe you just need a medication for your pain and the viruses go away by itself. I agree. So MRSA, medicine, why is it important MRSA? Well, MRSA stands for medicine resistant staphylococci. So for you to kill the bug, you have to use very expensive antibiotics and sometimes very nephrotoxic that antibiotics such as vancomycin that can kill your kidneys. So it's a difficult uh, bacteria to deal with. Mm -hmm. And lamentably, it's everywhere nowadays. Now we have, now we're worried about the acinetobacters, VREs. I mean, it goes, the, 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 the four, three letter Denominations grows and grows and grows, right? Yes, you know? sir. Yes, it is. You, you mentioned the VRE. It's, a, it's a, another bacteria that is resistant to vancomycin. Mm -hmm. 
So because we use vancomycin so much, so much for cases, like you mentioned before, in the hospitals, that when all they do is just test the nares, and when they're carriers and they're not, they're not actually infected, in other words, they didn't need to take the vancomycin, like you mentioned, Dr. Right. Well, the, the, the key intervention is hand washing. And hand washing is important in not just do like Pelly does, that puts a little water, a little soap, and just <laughs> like that. But you have to hand wash and sing a happy birthday. And when you finish your happy birthday, your hands should be free of bugs. I think it's also important to um, clean really well any open skin or wounds, because MRSA loves to get into any break in the skin that no. you may have, even pimples. Um, scrapes, things like that, and they can turn into a serious problem. And Soap and water usually is good enough. And concerning a hand washing, like she was mentioning, there's areas that we don't really think about, such as under your nails or between your fingers. So instead of just washing your hands like this, we recommend wash between your fingers and between your nails. Excellent and I think point. That's, that's very important to think about. And I know we have uh, several students here in BISD that will become doctors and nurses and and PAs and NPs, uh, such as uh, Liz and myself. And it's very important right now to be thinking about these things. Very basic, fundamental, important things. Hand washing, like we were talking about. And that brings an important point. And this is what I love to teach. Uh, I love to teach PAs, MPs, medical students, because that is my legacy. This, I will pass, but guys like this will continue the good work of treating and preventing diseases.